Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rick Sethi. I'm part of the Cloud and Infrastructure team at Professional Advantage. Welcome to our Internet in a Box webinar. I have with me my colleague Shannon Carey, who's one of our senior SharePoint consultants. Hello. So I'm, a, I'm the one on the left and the better, one, better looking one on the right is Shannon. <laughs> so both of us will take you through our Internet in a Box solution. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping things. Uh, we have a questions uh, section of the GoToMeeting uh, login. So you can, when we talk about the content, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions. So you're going to put them there and we'll get to them towards the end of the webinar. We will be recording this session, so you don't have to rush into taking screenshots or writing down points. A link will be made available after the webinar for you to go through. And you can also share that with your colleagues who weren't able to make it today. A few points on what we're going to be talking about today. So we'll start off with why SharePoint. For those of you who are not familiar with SharePoint as a solution, I'll touch on a few points on where does SharePoint fit in. Uh, not in too much detail, just at a high level. Uh, we'll talk about why Internet in a Box, that's the core of the webinar today. Uh, Shannon will take us through a brief demo of what can you expect from the Internet in a Box solution. And towards the end I'll talk about the different packages and options should you wish to proceed with the solution. So why SharePoint? Now those who are familiar with SharePoint will probably agree it's, it's, it's a beast of a platform. It can do a number of things. It can be a document management solution, it can be a corporate intranet, it can be a reporting solution, it can help you automate your processes. And what we've found particularly is if you if you try and understand what SharePoint can do, it's best to start off with your business issues. To be clear on what you're trying to achieve. And then speak to someone on how SharePoint can actually address that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some of the points around the business issues we hear from our customers, our prospects, when we start the SharePoint discussions. So these are the things which we come across all the time. Uh, can't find anything, search is broken, not sure which, not sure which version is the right one. Uh, this is quite uh, common when the organizations use this, still the good old file share. <laughs> the same documents are stored in multiple folders and the users generally struggle to define which is the right version because it's a similar looking document. People say things where it suits them. This is what generally leads to the previous point because uh, when the technology is not sophisticated enough and the process is not clear, people just say wherever they like it. People look in silos here. The phone directory is out of date. This one in particular is when um, the organization is using legacy system, which is, you know, and the, the phone directory is not synced with the active directory and it's hard to maintain the application and people then lose trust in the system. Internet doesn't work. Um, I know it's very vague, but we hear that quite a lot. And it means different things for different people, and they're, they're trying to explain different things depending on the department they're coming from. I asked Sue, she's been here the longest. This is this is quite a good one, and I'm pretty sure everybody on the call can relate to this, because there's all, every organization has, a, has that one person who knows everything about every process, who knows everything about the business, which is good, which makes things easy, because you can go to one person and get all the answers. But the challenge that poses is, what if that person leaves? What about the knowledge in the head? So after the person leaves, it becomes really hard for the other users to, you know, to, to get all that information. So SharePoint can help you store all that knowledge in the platform, which can be used after the person has left. It will be in someone's inbox. Good old email. It's a fantastic technology. It's been helping us for decades. But the problem is the information that is shared by emails, it just sits there. It's not reusable. It's not referenceable. And I often hear my colleagues saying that email is where the information goes to die. So we, we see that as a, we hear that a lot from our customers when they're looking at the SharePoint. I find things I shouldn't. Uh, lack of uh, a proper platform which can have a security trimming around information, you know, causes to these issues. It takes me so long to do things. It's all manual and double handling. It's hard getting info out of anyone here and so forth. I have better systems at home. we have started to see this more and more due to availability of, uh, of technologies like mobile apps and, you know, and stuff which, is, which people use in their personal lives. And, and when they come to work, it's still the old legacy system which is not flexible and no, not as uh, mobile as they used to. So it, it leads to frustration. 
The last one, every three years we have to do it all over again. This one particularly comes from uh, uh, IT, um, who have to spend like you know, hours and weeks you know, upgrading the system, maintaining the technology. It's not something they really enjoy. So this one relates to SharePoint Online. So if you can relate to any of the points I've, I've taken you through in the last couple of slides, uh, SharePoint is what you should look into. And and just pick up this, any of these points and speak to the uh, speak to a SharePoint specialist and see how it can work for you. Now the core of our presentation today: Internet of Box, Wire Packed Approach. Now we've been doing SharePoint consulting for almost 15 years now. Have worked with a number of different organisations ranging from 50 users to 5,000 users. And the traditional approach has been uh, we spent some time up front speaking to the business users, speaking to different stakeholders, understanding the business requirements, uh, translating those business requirements into a technical design, documenting them and planning the project. Well, it's a fantastic approach and it works well. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort. To give an example, the analysis and design which we have been doing traditionally uh, can take anywhere between two to three weeks and cost, cost you between fifteen to $25,000. Now, we've seen it's not a luxury that every organization has to invest that sort of time and money up front. So once the approach works, it doesn't work for all the organizations. And that's where the internet in a box solution fits in, to give you a cheap, uh, a rapid deployment methodology and without much investment up front. Now, to get away from uh, the traditional approach uh, uh, of uh, doing analysis and design up front, we've seen organizations buying products off the shelf, which is its own challenges. Uh, they're not as flexible. Uh, you don't get access to the back-end code. You cannot, it, there's limited options available to tailor them to your business needs. So you, you're either left with the option to change your processes to meet the, what the product can do, or just let go of the requirement. So the Internet in a Box solution is, is designed to be a perfect blend to provide that cost-effective approach with the flexibility that's required by the business to have something specific to your needs. So that's just at a high level where the Internet in a Box solution fits in. Uh, we have with us Shannon Carey, as I mentioned before. Shannon is a senior consultant. So he's going to actually show us some of the cool stuff that can be delivered out of the Internet in a Box solution. And just to give you a bit of a, some flavors on what can be expected out of the project. So I'll hand you over to Shannon. Thanks, Rick. So what I want to show you today is this is a, an example intranet in a box environment that we've put together at PA. It takes the, some of the bits and pieces from the different intranet in a box implementations and designs that we've done and it puts them in one place so that we can show you how we often put these particular designs together. The intranet is not a new concept been around for a long time now. Think about how you would send out a communication to the rest of the business. How would staff normally find that again? Things like quarterly results, updated health and safety information, changes in key suppliers, new major contracts. And again, how do you make sure that everybody can actually see that content? Do they miss that email or do they miss the staff meeting? Internet in a Box is a great tool to be able to help organizations push this information out to a company. Often companies set an Internet in a Box homepage as the employee's homepage when they open up Internet Explorer or, Microsoft or Google Chrome or something like that so that all of the new latest information for that particular organization can be pushed out to all the employees. What I'll do here is I'll go through and I'll show you what this Internet in a Box package could look like. When I click over to Internet Explorer here, you can see that we have a home page for an intranet in the box. Some of the key things that I would like to show you with this intranet in the box. First of all, we have this slider. We call this a news slider in the middle of the page. When you're thinking about quarterly results or maybe new major contracts and you want to push that out to the organization so that they can see what's going on on a regular basis, keep up to date with the organization, this is a great spot to be able to put that information 
so that everybody sees it as soon as they log into their intranet in a box or into their computer. If, for instance, I wanted to see a little bit more information about this particular article or um, piece of information, I could click on this Read More button and it would open up the article for me. Often some organizations will go through and they'll put a video in there. Maybe it's the CEO or the director that goes in and records what's been happening in the organization for that week or that month. And it's a kind of a nice way to update the business with what's going on in a nice video format. People can come in here and look at it whenever they like. As well as that, another thing that you'll notice on this home page is there's a thing called the news feed. Now the news feed is a great way to move conversations out of inboxes and move them into a place where everyone can get to and everyone can see. You can decide to be part of this conversation or not. You can see Peter here has posted a, a message, hi welcome to the new intranet. I can easily reply back to Peter if I wanted by saying, uh, looks great. And I could even tag someone in this particular post as well by maybe typing their name. So I'll type in Rick's name and we'll send him a message so Rick makes sure he sees this particular post and I'll click on post and off that will go. That posts away to, to Rick. Often you might see that we either use a news feed here or we could even use a, something like a Yammer feed or Yammer conversation as well. If I scroll up a little bit now, you can see there is a key document section. This is really useful for organizations to push out to people what the latest version of a policy or what the latest document is that they're looking for. You can easily put documents in here and you can click on them and that will open them and take them to the latest version of that particular document. Below that we have a shortcut section. We often see organizations put in shortcuts to other systems, for example. You might have a separate payroll or time sheeting system. And if you're always looking for the link to that particular system, this is a great place to put it. Every time you open up your web browser, doesn't matter which one it is, you can get to that shortcut on the right hand side. And if I scroll down, there's one more piece on the page that I want to talk about, which is the events. Often people's calendars in their Outlook is not the best place to store events. If somebody new comes in or we miss somebody from the calendar event, then they might miss what's going on within the organization. They might miss a staff meeting, they might miss a, when a proposal is due, they might miss a key date that's related to the entire company. So there's a nice visual way that we can represent what particular events are coming up within this particular organization within your organization. Great. So what you're saying, Shannon, is with the Internet in a Box solution, people can be smarter. Businesses can be smarter the way they communicate with the users. And this can eventually become the knowledge management platform instead of uh, the point we had before where the information gets lost in email. Yeah? Absolutely. We move out of working in silos and we're all working together in the same spot. Great. When working as a team, what information would you need at hand to keep everyone up to date and confident that they are collaborating on the latest version of content? What I'm going to show you now is the design for one of our intranet in a box solutions for the finance team. The finance team have decided that there's a, a stack of stuff that they need to be able to share with each other, calendar appointments and tasks, and have it all in the same spot. So I'll show you what our, our first team site, we can have up to five of these, might look like, team or department site. So I'll just flick back into my intranet in a box. And in our intranet in a box solution, you can see that one of the first things that on the page is a documents button. This is a good spot to store all of your documents as a team or a department. Any finance collaboration stuff that needs to happen, we could put all that our documents in there and everyone can work on the same latest version of the document. No more sending it out by email and everybody does their own changes and sends back a different copy. We can all, as a finance team, work on the same version of a document. Below that you can see that there's a news feed that the finance team can use to talk about finance 
information or finance stuff. So you saw that there was a news feed on the home page. That news feed on the home page was more of an all company type of news feed. You wouldn't want finance specific stuff necessarily being shown there and muddied around a little bit. We can have a specific finance chat in here for the finance people and if you had to ask the finance team a question, this would be a good spot that you could go in and ask that particular question. When I'm doing designs for different customers, one of the things they often mention to me is new starters and new people or even sometimes people within the business, when they're going to the finance department or another department, they don't know who they should contact. So what we like to do is we like to put a nice little contact section on each of the different pages for the different teams or departments. You can see here this particular page has the CFO, who's uh, Dirk, and the financial controller and the site owner all listed on this particular page. This way, if I'm a new starter or I, I need to go and ask someone in finance what I need to do or where a particular form is or something like that, then I can easily see who I need to contact. Underneath that, there's a task section. What we can do here with these tasks is we can go and add a task related to people within finance so that we can make sure that we're all uh, doing what we need to do and achieving our, our goals as a team. Well, to add a new task, it's pretty easy. What I, all I need to do is click on this new task button, which opens up a brand new form. And I think we should maybe assign a task to Rick here. So we can say, Rick, at PA, we need to fill in timesheets on a Thursday afternoon. So I'm going to fill type in a new uh, task called fill in timesheets. And I'm going to assign this particular task to Rick. So I'll say, Rick, it's Thursday today, so you need to do a timesheet. It's due today. And then in the assign to section, I can simply type in Rick's name. He'll come up, I'll click on him, and then I'll click on the Save button. This particular task list can also be linked up to your Microsoft Outlook so that you can manage the tasks from in there. When Rick logs into the finance site in the morning and the afternoon to check what tasks he has, he can simply scroll down to the My Task section and he can see that there's a task that's been assigned in there. It's due today and it's to fill in the timesheet. Once Rick's done his particular timesheet, he can simply tick the box, which marks that task as complete. And finally on this page, I wanted to talk to you about the calendar. We have a finance calendar. This is a good way for the finance team to become organized and to be able to share what particular appointments that they have. So maybe the finance team have to do payroll, and the payroll has to be once a fortnight or once a month. What they can do is they can easily click on Thursday and they can click on add a new appointment and they can type in that they need to do, run payroll on the Thursday. That can be a reoccurring appointment. We can do it every Thursday or we can do it every week if we want to. It's a good way to be able to make sure that you're not missing any proposal deadlines or key staff meetings or anything like that. Good way for everyone to see what's going on within that particular department. And all of those things are all in the same spot. Everything from your documents to your tasks to your conversations, who's part of the team to the shared calendar. So is it fair to assume, Shannon, that you would create a site like this for each uh, department in a business for the users to collaborate and you know, have a look at the information specific to their role? Absolutely. So we, we like to talk to businesses and find out how they work. And then... Um, as part of the design engagement, we can create up to five of these sites for people to work with. Great. How many times have you been at work and you've heard someone say something like, where is the expense form or the workplace safety documents or the policies or procedures forms or the new starter form? Something that's kind of not related to a particular department, but it's related to everybody. I've definitely heard it a lot of times. One of the things that we like to do with our intranet in a box packages is create a central resources section. The central resources section is used to store the latest copy of the document so that everybody can go and find it, know where to find the latest version of that particular document. 
So I want to show you how that particular resources section might work in our intranet in a box package. So log back into my SharePoint site. I can log on to the resources page. On the resources page, you can see that I have some different links. I have a link to the forms, policies and procedures, templates, and some help documentation. If I wanted to go and find some procedures or upload a new procedure, I could click on this policies and procedures button. Once I go into the policies and procedures, I can see all of the different documents that are listed in as shared resources for the organization. We can put different review dates and things like that so that people can come in and they can make sure that they're reviewing the dates on a, on a regular basis so the documents are up to date. And people coming in here know that they're looking at the latest version because this is the official spot to store all of the policies or the procedures. If I wanted to upload a new policy, I could either create a new one by clicking on the new button on the page, or I could go into, if I already had one created on my desktop, I could simply pick a, a policy, like accepting gifts that I have here, and I could go and I could drag that into the SharePoint environment, and I could drop it in there, and what that would do is that would upload that document for me. You can see I have accepting gifts now. You can see that it's the main department responsible for it sets to IT by default. I can simply go in and I can change that. I can click on this little information button and on that information button I can select a department and I can change it to finance. That way finance is responsible for that particular document. So basically this is a section that we create as part of the internet in a box solution to store information that's more general to the whole business instead of actually being specific to any particular department. That's correct. So it's more for the whole organization. So you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, well, Shannon, you've uploaded documents a finance document into the finance section and then you've uploaded a finance document into the, the resources section. And you might also be thinking, well, I still have a whole lot of files on my file server that um, relate to finance. So how do I make sure I can find this? Especially a new employee, if someone new in the organization comes in, they won't know where to look in the finance section or the all company section or the file share or even the public website for this particular information. So how do I, what's the easiest way to go and find the documents in my company? Well, as part of the intranet in the box solution, what we have is we like to configure a search area. We customize how the search engine works within SharePoint. Let's have a bit of a look at how that search in SharePoint works. So I'll go and I'll have a look back in my SharePoint intranet in a box environment and you can see I have a search button clicked on up the top. I can easily type in something, let's say I was a new employee and I wanted to find um, my workplace health and safety document, maybe some training. What I can do is I can type in WHS and training and click on go and what should happen here is we should get a page, a search result page come back with all of the workplace health and safety documents. We don't have many up uploaded at the moment. We have one, but I can see there it is, the first one. If I was had a lot of results on this particular page and I wasn't exactly sure which one was the one I was looking for, what I, would, what I could do is I could hover over that document and it would come up with a nice little preview for me. I could then click on the play, because this is a video, it's got a play button. If it was a Word document, I'd be able to scroll through the pages or a PowerPoint presentation, I'd be able to click through it. And I could have a nice little preview of making sure this is the document I want before I actually go into it. I really like this because it saves me a lot of time from going in and checking every document that I need to try to find the right one that I'm after. So this is extremely handy, this particular preview thing. As well as that, on the left-hand side, we have some what we call refiners. And refiners help us search through the environment. See, what you can see here is we have a result type. We have a SharePoint site, a team site, a video, and a page. Because I'm looking for a video, I could simply click on this video button and it would show me the video. 
you can notice that there's no nothing in this particular environment where it says Microsoft Word document. And the reason is is because the search hasn't brought any Word documents back in. It hasn't found any workplace health and safety Word documents. So it didn't give us that option. It saves us from clicking on that option and, and getting nothing, which is quite nice. Some of the other refiners that we would configure out of the box is maybe the author. We can see who's created that particular document and we can also see when it was last modified and, and refine that down. Did you want to tell us a bit more about the refiners, Shannon? Are these out of the box, or do you actually, how do you come up with these refiners? Yeah, sure. So the refiners is an interesting one in that there was, there'll be some that we have out of the box as our intranet in a box solution, but during our workshops, we like to look at how organizations store data. And based on how they store and, and work with data, then we can actually come up with customer refiners as well, or different refiners. So in this particular instance, you can see that we have multiple departments, maybe board of directors, finance, IT, marketing, and sales. So we might like to put a custom refiner in that refines based on those particular areas. If there's some other terms that are important to your business, we'll also put those ones in and tag them against a particular document. I think it's fair to say this is the most crucial part of the whole Internet of Box solution because it probably ties all the pieces together. Like from a user perspective, this is the first place you would go to in case you're not familiar with the environment to look for information. Absolutely. It's one of the most crucial parts of an Internet in the Box package. Great. I want to talk to you a little bit about project management now. Often many organizations come to us and they say, oh, I would like to have uh, put some processes and some controls around my projects. But I've had a look online and I've just found some project management tools, Project Online, CRM, Project Automation Services, which are great. We really love them, but it's overkill and too expensive for what I want to do. What all I want to do is I want to track the status of my project. And as well as that, I want to be able to store some documents and some key milestones and see who's responsible. And that's about it. The rest of the project management and expensive desktop tools like Project Online, they're not right for my business. So what we do with a lot of our Internet in a Box packages is we add a project management add-on into the solution, which essentially does that. It lets you go through and see all of the different projects that are running, the health of the different projects, where they're up to and who's responsible for them, and store documents against these particular projects. So what I want to do is I want to show you how this particular project sites work. So I'll go back into my Internet in a Box solution and I'll go to the Project Center. Within the Project Center, you can see, in this case, we have three projects that are currently in progress one that's proposed. We can see that the 365 training plans are in a bit of trouble. They're in a, a red state, but other ones are in a pretty good state, such as this project site demonstration. I have a, I'll click on this project site demonstration so I can show you exactly what's involved in this project online, sorry, project site. Once this page loads up, some of the things that you'll notice is, first of all, we have a little bit of a description about what the project is. So if somebody's coming in here trying to understand what this project's about, they can simply read that and see what's, what we're trying to achieve. There's some nice status icons on the top right-hand corner. We have a status being in progress. We might have a status saying priority one. This is a really important project to us. And then we have a start and finish time. So start the 10th of March, finish on the 17th of September. If I have a little bit more of a look on what's on this particular project page, you can see that we have a project summary. This is a list of all of the different tasks for this particular project. You can see we've got to collate materials for RFP and collect RFP responses and QA. We can see when it starts and when it ends and when the key milestones are. So we can get a nice overview of what's going on with that particular project straight away. Just underneath that, there's a nice big blue box there which says 16 days. That's how many days are remaining 
for that project to be finished on time. And the other key thing with when you're talking about finishing projects is looking at how on budget we are. This particular project has a big budget of $100 and we've finished and we've used so far $25 out of our $100. You can see how our project spend is going for this particular project. On the right hand side you can then see who the project sponsors are, Peter and Gazelle. And I'll scroll down a little bit more and we'll see what else is on this project page. On the right hand side there's uh, some documents. Often this is one of the key requirements for these project sites. I just need to be able to store my business case or my proposal or my project scope and the sort of documentations I need to run my project so I can easily drag and drop them into this area and we can all have the latest version of the documents and work on those documents together, which is really handy. In the middle of the page, we have a, an issues. Often issues and risks are really important for projects to be able to see what risks that we're having, what might be able to stop us from completing this project on time. A nice way to be able to track it and share what those particular risks and remediations or issues are. And then below that we have a decision register. If we've made any key decisions within the project, we can track them on this page as well. Couldn't remember why we made a decision. We can go back and we can click on it and have a, a bit of a look at why we made that particular decision and how it's affected the project. On the right hand side you can see that we have some links. These links are often used. They go to the project page or a customer page. Just places that the people working within this project would like to go to to see these sort of things. Oh great. Having known some of the project management options available out there, I know this is probably one of the most cost effective way to do like task management in SharePoint, isn't it? Absolutely. It's much, much cheaper than some of the other pro products out there. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, I believe uh, the views would have got an overview of what's possible through the Internet in a Box solutions with what you've shown us. Um, I'm just going to quickly take you through uh, the different uh, options that are available to, to, you know, to go about this uh, approach. Uh, we've made it really simple. We've got one base package which I'll talk about a bit more in the next slide. But in terms of add-ons, there are three add-ons which you can purchase on top of the base package. The project management module, which uh, Shannon showed earlier, and the other one is ADFS setup. So with the with the base packet, the Internet Explorer bundle, you do get the single sign-on. That means that we will configure the credentials to your Active Directory, as your Active Directory, so the same credentials can be used when you log into Office 365. But if you want a more seamless experience, we can uh, set up Active Directory Federation services as well, and that can be purchased as an ex extra additional module. Uh, now, the demonstration that Shannon did for us today was uh, based on Office 365 but the same solution can be delivered on your on-premise infrastructure as well. We know a lot of NFPs have a preference uh, due to the availability of uh, cheap Office uh, SharePoint license available um, to do it on-premise, so that can be done. That can be purchased as an extra module. And in case you have any specific requirements which are not covered in the Internet Explorer bundle or the add-ons that are available, you have an option to purchase extra consulting base for us to uh, build that into the solution as well. Just at a high level, what's included in the Internet Explorer bundle, we spent a lot of time uh, looking at the requirements of the businesses and based on our experience with the hundreds of these projects we've done, we've factored in the key components in the Explore, Internet, Internet Explorer bundle. It's got an element of document management uh, to create those basic uh, key document libraries. Internet, what uh, uh, Shannon demonstrated earlier, we, we create a single sign-on, you know, sync your uh, credentials to Azure Active Directory, and we don't just deliver the project and leave you with it. The, the Internet Explorer bundle does include post-project support um, to help you, you know, get on the journey smoother. And uh, it's got the allocation for a project management to be done as part of the process. The last and the most critical training, uh, this is, uh, there's no ongoing cost for this uh, Internet in a box solution. So we make you self-sufficient to manage it yourself as part of the uh, training that's uh, done towards the end of the project, so you can manage the environment yourself, so you can add content and be self-sufficient. So that's at a 
high level what's included in the Internet Explorer bundle. I'm sure those who are thinking of how much it cost, the price can vary depending on the modules you select. So it can range from uh, anywhere between $25,000 to $35,000, which uh, if you remember what I mentioned earlier, with the traditional approach, that's the amount of money you would spend doing the upfront analysis. But with this approach, you can have a fully functional SharePoint environment um, you know, uh, delivered to you. I think we'll be running out of time now, so we just need to open the floor for any questions you may have. Uh, I'm just going to go through the questions window and see what the questions have come through. So can you allocate a task to several people at once? It's come from Maria. Yes, it's Shannon here. Absolutely you can assign a task to multiple people. So you can type all of their names in um, or you could go through and you could assign it to an Active Directory or an Office 365 group or even a SharePoint group. So there's lots of different options for assigning tasks to multiple people. Okay. The other question is, does everyone see the same shortcuts on, on this front page? Everyone will see the same shortcuts on the front page to start with, but we can also do some what we call audience targeting. So we can customize it for the different department you're in or for who you are. We can personalize it. For instance, if you are a finance person, maybe you'd want to see a shortcut to the finance page. Um, if you're a HR person, you might go to the HR page. Or maybe it's an external system based on you being a, a HR person. So we can... By default, they, they will be the same, but then we can go and add additional ones that are specific to who you are. Okay, the next question is, should Rick's t my task show only in his tasks? So can somebody else see my tasks as well? That depends upon what you want to see on that page. We can d configure it either way. We can either say, show me all of the tasks that are assigned to me, or I could say, show me all of the tasks. You could also say, show me all of the tasks that are assigned to my team, but not other teams. So we do have an option to be able to configure that multiple ways, depending upon who you are and, and what sort of requirements that you have, what will work best for your business. And we determine that during the initial workshops. Okay. Another question we have is, what if we need more than five sites? We are able to provide more than five sites. It depends how complicated they are. Uh, it, if you've got really, really complicated sites, then um, I suppose Rick would have to talk to you about pricing those ones out. But in the initial estimate, it's usually up to five sites. So you can certainly have additional sites, and that was the, uh, my last, if you remember the last slide I showed where there was an option to buy additional consulting days. So during the initial workshops, it's, it, you know, we find out uh, that you need more than five. We, we can try an estimate on how much that's going to cost you. Okay, another question we have is, can files on server shares be brought in, in easily to be accessible via SharePoint? I'll take that one, Rick. So definitely, there's a couple of different options. We can have SharePoint index what's on the file share so that when you search for content, that that content is actually displayed in your search results. If you want all of the powerful tools or collaboration tools that are involved with a SharePoint site, you have to copy the documents into SharePoint. And generally, we recommend a migration period or potentially a, a third-party tool to help you out move all of that content into SharePoint. Okay. We have a question around responsive design. So how does it the how does the information displayed on mobile devices? That's a good question. So out of the box with a SharePoint site, it's not very responsive. There's some mobile views that are available as part of SharePoint, but they don't or they're not always fit for purpose. So what we do as part of our intranet in a box package is we brand the site and we put in a responsive design. So that what can happen is you can actually view that it will become smaller and fit onto the mobile phone correctly. It will resize itself in a responsive fashion for your mobile phone as part of an intranet in the box package. Okay. Um, the next question we have is, can you lock down the policy so that 
people can't edit them? Absolutely. We have a variety of different security permissions and we'll talk in the initial workshops about what permission levels or governance is required. So we might say that we have a governance policy where we have three levels of permission, read, contribute and full control, so that a read person would only be able to read the documents, such as a policy or procedure, but someone else in the organisation might have a contribute permission so that they can actually change the documents there as well. We can get more advanced and put in a, an approval type of process. So you might have a HR team working on a particular policy and then when they're ready to release it to go live, we can have a manager or an executive approve that document before everyone in the organisation can see it. So there's lots of controls that we can put around to um, limit reading or viewing or approval. Great. Um, so there's a question around how much are the additional modules. So it depends on which module you're referring to, but an average they range from anywhere between five to seven thousand dollars for each of those modules. Okay, so let's see what else we got. What about different themes to suit our branding? As part of the initial workshops, what we do is we have a look at your particular style guide and if you have one, or look at the corporate colors that you're using. And as part of the process, we can go through and create the SharePoint to look like your organization, to make it feel like it's the, your intranet. So we will do that as part of the workshops and the initial process. I guess in short, like it, it, it is customized. So every intranet box solution we do is specific to the client's branding. That's correct. Okay, uh, I think that we'll take one more question. So you mentioned an approval permission slash governance. Is this using a workflow engine? So there's two things I was talking about there. One is the approval process, and that would absolutely be using the workflow engine to do the approval. So it will send a task to different people, and then they will approve it, and then the workflow will continue on from there. And also I did talk about security. Uh, so security, being able to lock the document down to people, that would mean that that would not use the workflow engine. That's the out-of-the-box security controls. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Shannon, for taking those questions. I think we're pretty much out of time now. So I've got the, my contact details on the screen here. So for those who still want to have a chat and have some more questions, please feel free to get in touch on any of the details there. Uh, we will be running our next webinar around uh, integrated web-based procurement uh, next week. So if that's of interest, please uh, register your details on our website. So thank you again for taking the time to attend the webinar today. We look forward to seeing you at our future events. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.